welcome to everyone who is joining us today. Before we kick off today's session, I'd like to welcome you to check in using the details on the screen in front of you. So checking into any of our events allows you to access resources which are relevant to that specific event, but also information about upcoming sessions which are being run out of various reactor locations um, which are around similar topics to today's session. So please um, feel free to check in. I'll also drop those details details into the chat shortly as well. So today's session is episode number two of the Green Tech series and is looking at Climate Hackathon, the winners. So we'll be talking to many of the teams that participated in the Climate Hackathon as well as some of the winners as well. So this session will run over the next 60 minutes. It is being recorded and will be made available to watch on demand on the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel shortly. Again, I'll pop a link into the chat of where you can access the on-demand video too. Um, please feel free to engage in any questions, conversations that's happening today. Uh, the chat feature will be monitored throughout, so anything you have to add, please feel free to use that. There is also a raise your hand feature within Teams, so again, you're, you're welcome to use that feature too if you have any questions. Okay, so I'd just like to run through our code of conduct very briefly before we get started. This is a reminder to everyone who's joining us today to just be aware of one another. It's an inclusive environment that we have. So just to really be friendly and welcoming throughout. And if we do see any differences of opinions, just to be aware of any, um, any differences that we might see um, through conversations as well. OK, and before we get started, I would like to introduce our two moderators for today. So Sherry List and Goran are joining us. Sherry works for Microsoft and has been working as a web developer over the past 15 years or so. And Goran is a technical manager at Stratitech and also a Microsoft AI MVP. So we're delighted to have you both here and I will hand over to you both now to kick us off. Thank you very much and thanks for the nice introduction. So hi everyone. Uh, as Emma mentioned, today we are going to have like a recap of climate hackathon that happened in March. So the goal for this hackathon was to raise awareness about the climate issues um, as well as the climate technologies and and the um, nonprofit and non uh, governmental organizations that they have uh, a key uh, role in this battle. And um, we did this hackathon together with one of our partners, which is called Stratitech. And I have Goran here with me today from Stratitech that maybe you can give a bit more information about the hackathon. Yes, sure. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Goran Vukšić, and as uh, been said, work as technical manager for Stratitech. We organized it uh, with uh, Microsoft. We have some a bit of noise. <laughs> Had to mute the participants, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Hackathon took place online in uh, March. We had over 400 <laughs> participants from the, from the 50 different so, countries. I don't know exactly what that means now, what that looks like. And, uh, uh, I'll try uh, to keep you as informed as I can. Please as handle muting, please. Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we run the hackathon over the five days. And uh, yeah, a lot of people participated, spent a lot of hours uh, creating amazing projects. Uh, all the challenges on the hackathon were in four tracks. It was wastewater ecosystem and um, carbon. And uh, what was really unique about this hackathon is that non-profit uh, and non-governmental organizations provided challenges for, for this hackathon. And goal was to build solution to inspire them, okay, how technology nowadays can tackle those challenges. Uh, solutions build were open sourced, so hopefully it could uh, kick off some other ideas and help uh, other nonprofits or NGOs out there to uh, 
solve their their uh, challenges. And um, yeah, really, really uh, amazing contributions from many teams. Uh, we had a great council to review this and uh, judges to decide on the best projects. It was a lot of projects hard to always to select the best ones, but someone has to be the winner, right? And uh, we have three winning teams today with us. So Sherry, maybe you could say which teams we have. Um, yes, let's have a quick round of introduction uh, for each team. And let's just start with Team Eruza. Sarah, maybe can you introduce yourself? Maybe? Sure. Hi, my name is Sarah Olson and I work at Gaia System as a full stack developer and mainly with IoT and machine learning and like solutions around that. I live in Sweden and apart from programming, I love animals, being outdoors and running practicing yoga. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And uh, Aaron? Uh, you are muted, Aaron. Oh, uh, <laughs> I expected. I'm hearing the same statements a couple of times. OK, uh, I'm Aaron Prakash Yodimani, MSc computer science student at Chalmers University. Currently, I'm doing my master thesis with Volvo Cars. Uh, where I have been introduced to Microsoft Azure and my passion got deepened from there. So uh, prior to my master's, I have hands-on work experience uh, with companies like Huawei Technologies and ADP. And in my free time, um, I used to run a lot and I'm a coffee lover. That's it about me. Great. And moving on to Julia. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Julia Gab. I'm a user experience designer based in Los Angeles, California. And uh, I'm also originally from Europe, moved here about five years ago. And I'm currently freelancing and still growing and learning um, and currently still studying. And i um, very excited to, to have done this hackathon um, in my free time. Um, I also love animals. I love the environment. I think um, this hackathon was perfect in line with um, with my passion. So um, yeah, fantastic. So we have we have two people from Sweden and one in the US and two animal lovers and one coffee lovers. That's a good combination. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to Team Purple Penguins. Jonas, would you start? Yes, hi, my name is uh, Jonas Alder. Um, I live in Zurich and I work for uh, Sulke. Um, and I'm a software engineer. I also love infrastructure, so I I have a very broad experience working for Sulke for the last uh, like four years. Um, currently, I'm working on a project for cloud connected coffee machines. So, uh, Aaron, that may be something for you. And uh, <laughs> in my free time, I I really love skiing, but obviously the, it's the wrong season right now, but uh, let's hope there will be snow again next season. <laughs> Great. And uh, is Christian here from your team? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, yes. so I'm Christian. I, I also work for Silke in Switzerland, in Zurich, like Jonas. I'm a software architect here and I'm so my the tech stack I'm working with is the .NET stack and web technologies. That's what I'm doing, yeah. Great. And Joa, I'm not sure if I pronounce your name correctly. It's Joao, it's Joao, that's <laughs> it's close enough. Uh, hi, I'm Joao, or Joe, if you want. Um, I also work for Zulke, uh, but not in Zurich, in the, in the UK, in Birmingham. Uh, I'm a business analyst. Um, outside work, uh, I've got three kids that basically run my life. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I've enjoyed this hackathon very much. Yeah, thank you. And Lucas? Uh, I, um, I'm Lucas Mendoza. I'm based in Zurich and I work for Unitite. Um, I'm a data engineer, so I'm, I like to work in, pro in products related to data, uh, machine learning, and cloud. Um, and yeah, in my free time, I, I kind of just 
like to do like sports reading and yeah that's about it yeah and thank you and i missed <laughs> the teams sorry for that so it was the next team actually <laughs> and uh, so team, team purple penguins um actually it was finished with the draw and then we move on with team unit eight which actually lucas has started sorry for that and then uh Gael. Uh, sure, so hi everyone, my name is Gael, so I'm also a data scientist at Unitate, so uh, I work from Lausanne, uh, so it's a different city, Swiss city. Uh, and yeah, I've worked in different industry in the past, like telco, pharma, chemical industry, through various projects. And, and recently I've been personally yeah, more interested in climate change, so I'm following a bit so what's happening, trying to meet people in, in the space, and so that was a good event to, to join. And otherwise, in my free time, I like to, to dance, swing, or, or cook, depending on the day. Great. And um, Michael? Uh, hello, so I'm Michael. I also work for Unitate. Uh, I started more originally, actually, I'm a mathematician. Uh, but then I started doing more like uh, data science. Had a couple of interesting data science projects, uh, but more and more I started to work as a data engineer. So now, I, now I'm more into the engineering part, uh, working on mostly like Hadoop platforms. Um, yeah, in my free time, I, I moved recently to Zurich to in Switzerland. So started working in Unitate actually a couple months ago. Uh, so enjoying Switzerland. Uh, my hobbies are climbing. So that's why I'm here as well. Fantastic. Great. And um, Yassir? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm based in Lausanne, so the French speaking part of Switzerland. Um, I'm a machine learning engineer, so background mainly in computer vision applications, uh, deep learning, and uh, in my free time, uh, foot, football fan. Oh, great. And is Jose here? Yeah, I am. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Jose. I'm a big data engineer, but a bit of a full stack engineer as well. Um, I'm interested in um, pretty much everything in my free time. I play music, I run, I read. Uh, I'm jack of all trades, interested in everything. I'm also quite passionate about the environment, which is the main reason why I participated in this hackathon as well. Great. Thank you for everyone. And it is really great to get to know you all. And I hope I didn't miss anyone. Did I? It yeah, was a no, big matrix it's, for me to solve. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, great to, to get to know you all. Um, and maybe we can uh, we can move on to so to actually to uh, to get to know you all more and also the, the project. Maybe Goran, you can take it uh, from here. Uh, yeah, sure. We can start with um, Project Arusa. So who could explain us what it was about and uh, what you did during the hackathon from the team? Um, I can start off that question. Um, and then um, they can explain the uh, technicalities a little bit more. But um, just to explain a little bit. So uh, after looking at the challenges presented to us, like you explained, we had four challenges, uh, tracks we could choose from. We were really drawn to the waste challenge and buy food with plastic. Um, for the amazing work they do uh, in countries like Nicaragua, Ghana, and India. Um, they actually allow individuals and families to buy food or sanitary items uh, with plastic. So they both tackle recycling and um, uh, hunger and poverty. So uh, we really wanted to help them basically by creating a system of waste management and automation. At this moment, their processes are very um, like you know by hand everything's done by hand so it takes a lot of time um, and effort and this can be obviously put into into something into creating more events so uh, we did this by designing a progressive web application um, that the uh, 
event managers could use on site. And then we try using Azure Cloud Platform and AI capabilities so that NGO can easily collect the data at those events and um, then, like I said, uh, make their processes a little um, better. But uh, maybe one of my teammates can um, take it over and explain a little bit more in detail. Yeah, we can mention that the AI capabilities that we used. Um, so we did an object detection model with custom vision to be able for um, the event makers to to capture an image and count how many bottles there are because they needed that to include in their impact reports. And also we included that text to speech uh, or speech to text so they could um, enter like, oh, no, we got this one or just like collecting information about the event but being able to focus on the people and like what they're doing um, and we as julia said we created a react web application and that we hosted on azure and also um, we could upload like data to storage account uh, images or data about uh, about what we extracted and also we used Figma for a pretty large prototype to like visualize how this could be in an end application. Nice. So how did you form the team? Like you're in different time zones and uh, how you, how you applied? Like did you found team members uh, after applying or you formed the team then applied or? Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, actually, I, I was exploring Dev Post and just with a hackathon, I was an individual. I just joined as an individual. I was thinking, okay, how to find the team, or actually I'm going to join the hackathon or not. And suddenly it was Julia who reached out to me and she sent an exciting mail. Hey, we can do that. I'm very excited. Uh, what do you think so? Then we had a, a quick uh, call over Teams and we found our mutual interest. Then we thought, okay, something will lock out. And next, I found like Sarah was also there as an individual, and I shooted a mail to Sarah. And uh, it is amazing that just within five minutes, I got a reply, and within 15, 20 minutes, she's onboarded. So I'm really proud of how the team went with the discipline because we always had a right type of commitment. The meeting was on time, so management was pretty fantastic. Great. <laughs> that, that's really good to know. <laughs> So maybe you can also um, tell us that, I mean, you talked about that what worked very well for you. Maybe you can also tell us a, a little bit about the challenges that you that you had during this, this hackathon. Sure. Um, I would say like understanding the needs and adjusting like every day a bit about the solutions. We had like first so different idea and then we listen to like the sessions that were every day at five or something and like Oh, so this is what they want and <laughs> like adjusting and in such short time and also it like it was pretty straightforward to implement certain parts of the problem um, like the machine learning models and web application but then like putting it all together and like deciding what kind of data you would send to the like final uh, system it's something that you normally would discuss with the <laughs> with the end user and that was just like guessing and that was a challenge nice and how you organized your time like we had those during the hackathons coffee sessions like quickly uh, having chat with participants and we heard about like uh, someone was saying okay now I'm soon done with development I go to sleep commit my code and then team member from the other zone is continuing was that the case like that or you had um, some other uh, way, way of uh, yeah that happens a lot with our team it was Sarah's uh, words every time hey I want to go to sleep it is already 11 o'clock during the meeting because by then Julia will be very fresh hey guys yeah we can do it what are you and it's Sarah like, hey, yeah, you can see our code there. You can continue. And we organized it pretty well because we had an on-time uh, daily sync up. So uh, every day, uh, evening, 6 o'clock, we used to sync up for sure. Well, it is Sweden's time. And uh, sometimes at night, in case if we have 
some office schedules we used to sync up by 10 o'clock and we kept the uh, progress very transparent by keeping each other updated because we used some uh, tool called notion where if you are completing something definitely we have updated it so julia will know okay these people slept but they completed this i have to continue from there so it is um, and also prior to hackathon even we started uh, discussing our uh, interests even during the weekend so it was quite helpful the interesting part is whenever you get up out of sleep always something interesting in the uh, available in the plate because either julia slept and under, updated something there or we both have completed something and kept something there and julia can see it something great mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have to say, yeah. yeah, it was great uh, being able to to collaborate like that. And and yes, I have to say that um, it was amazing the the commitment from from our team. So, mm -hmm. so you you clearly uh, took advantage of being online and also took advantage of the time zone, uh, which is great. And it brings me to the next question. At the end. Do you think that you prefer an online hackathon or an in-person hackathon? Well, I would say I'm happy about both. Like it's easier to collaborate and do it more intense in person, but it's also super fun to be able to connect in this way that we did. So I would pick every second hackathon to be in person. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but but in my perspective, uh, it has both advantage and disadvantage because in case if it is an offline hackathon, I think it costs a lot for our team to onboard Julia from US for so flight cost and accommodation. So in that case, online hackathon was helpful to meet some new people from different time zones and different part of the world. Do you plan to join some other hackathons soon? In oh, this yes. format of team or like... Uh, Always. Individually. <laughs> sure. We would love to, yes. You are after the climate challenges only or AI challenges? Like what's, what's most important, most interesting to you? Um, uh, definitely, I think uh, I'm interested a lot about cloud and the capabilities the cloud can bring in, starting from AI and stuff. Apart from that, during this last uh, hackathon climate hack, I got to know about uh, uh, people's interest and and at, at the end of the day, uh, the cause we are fighting for is much important. So even though there is a one way like we are learning the technology at the end of the day, what we deliver is how it's going to be helpful for the society. It matters. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and I think, Sherry, that's like also what we said, we hope that yeah, at least some line of code produced there will move something forward and make the world a better place. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, yeah, that that is true. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, but, yeah, and and one interesting fact here is like you know we thought already plastic had made some damages, so we have to reverse the damage, and we were thinking how to name our team, and it was Sarah who came up with a name called Eruza, which is just a reverse of Azure. We are reversing plastic damage and we reverse Azure as our name. That is very good to know. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't know that what Eruzo is. <laughs> that, that is very creative. And so if you want to say that, what was um, the, the kind of biggest things that biggest learning for, for you all? Um, what what would you what would say, what would you say what what you learned you think that it was the, the biggest learning for this hackathon for each of you um well i can say um and this goes a little bit with um the question of the challenges we face because every challenge we face we um we're happy that we were able to to um get over it and and accomplish uh the goals that we set um so, uh, and like Sarah mentioned earlier, we did, we realized how important it is to, especially after we understood we are working a little bit more closely with the NGO um, than we thought, then uh, we definitely realized the importance of uh, definitely asking questions and doing the research to know about their processes, just to be able to make the best informed decisions when it came to the design, of the interfaces 
and as well as the technology used, uh, because that definitely, again, was hand in hand. Um, you can have a great idea and a perfect idea, but it, if it doesn't apply to, um, you know, the the environment you're in, um, the physical environment you're in, and the resources you have, then, oh well, <laughs> it just stays as an idea. So, um, yeah, I think that's... Um, one of the main things, uh, definitely, I mean, learning, of course, like Arun mentioned, um, how important it is to, um, there's like a bigger cause, you know, like maybe he uh, joined this hackathon to expand his knowledge in a cloud or, um, you know, like maybe practice like working in a team, but like I did that, for example, um, and you end up learning, oh, this is bigger than that. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a few a few things. I know my teammates have anything else, but that's definitely some good things. Time management as well. I mean, like uh, Arun mentioned, definitely being able. Um, we decided we wanted to have a set time that, like Arun mentioned, we wanted to uh, update each other and keep transparent. So we did that, and it was great. Great communication. <laughs> yeah, I can simply agree. <laughs> it was a great experience, like working with the case, working with new people, and always getting new experience with us, like system architecture that you need to come up with. And yeah, yeah, the the learning was great. Uh, I definitely learned uh, something about uh, cloud, and uh, yeah, I mean, it gave an opportunity to explore the real potential behind the cloud. And apart from that, uh, I can see we learned the power of uh, collaborative work because when you ask questions, when we are getting three different perspectives coming every single point of time, then definitely you can take some uh, informed decisions. Sounds great. Like uh, everything went smoothly and time management was perfect. But we do know that hackathons usually can be a bit stressful last minute deliver stuff and such did you had such moment that oh deadline is approaching we need to submit the project uh, yeah yeah we had it uh, because we had a, a predefined deadline rather than whatever you have given because people have different commitments sara was having some different appointment during friday so she was running behind the schedule so she was to complete everything on thursday night uh, so we thought, okay, yes. then then Julia said, hey, it's a four day hackathon for me because when she gets up, already results were out because she was in US. So she's one day behind, something like that. Uh, so we have to manage all these things. But but we managed to submit uh, not on time, well before time, <laughs> like mm -hmm. almost four or five hours before I think Julia has submitted the video. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I mean, I can speak for myself at least um if there was any moment that um there was like uh, stress or frustration or um yeah that we felt or that i personally felt a little pressed anytime that we got together in a meeting and we got to talk in the end um there was just a feeling of reassurance because we um maybe we started a certain way but we ended up always like being able to discuss and and reach a common goal and like I said, it was, it, you know, communication would have been the hardest if, if you know, being like um, distant and not being in the same room. And honestly, it was, it was so seamless that, um, yeah, it ended up working out great. So <laughs> it was, it was great, thankfully. <laughs> awesome. So anything else from your side, Sherry? No, I wanted to ask uh, exactly anything else that you want to highlight, <laughs> Team Erusa. <laughs> uh, some fun moments. Some, uh, <laughs> the, dog. <laughs> yeah. the dog. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So we, we have a fun moment, like, you know, like even we are submitting three, four hours before, we always had a thought, okay, we could have done something better. Maybe we can add something more. So when we are recording the video, it was like 11 o'clock. So we were all nervous, okay, how judges will take it. Maybe we are presenting this way, how they are going to perceive it. So suddenly I asked uh, Sarah and Sarah has some lucky dog. 
she said that she got it like some university stuff to yeah, yeah maybe sara can talk about the dog a bit <laughs> he's a little mascot <laughs> ah, that's yeah cool. i got a um, <laughs> stanford dog that i changed for like a poster discount ticket and i was like can i have this this dog and now it's my lucky dog <laughs> ah that's good cool. you can see it in the video in the in the back <laughs> yeah so so we believe that lucky charm <laughs> yeah so so we believe that rather than the efforts we made uh, rather than the meetings we had we thought that the dog's appearance in our video brought us luck that's why we won the competition <laughs> <laughs> great and yeah and clearly it worked <laughs> the, the lucky dog. great thank you very much team erusa and um, i um, so i'm good. happy to hear that you uh, you learned something and also you had uh, you had fun while you are working on uh, on actually a real uh, project as well great and best of luck for you and really uh, hope to see you on our upcoming hackathons Uh, thank you so much thank you so much it was pleasant talking with you both sherry and goran as well thank you yeah thank you and um we can move on to team purple penguins yes team purple penguins would be great if someone can introduce your project which challenge you worked on what was project about and uh, yeah what kind of solution you built yes yeah i can do that um so a little bit about the, the challenge. So this challenge was from um, Climate Policy Radar. Uh, and what if they are a startup and they've, uh, what they've done so far, they've basically put together a big database of all the policies and all the laws in the world uh, that are to do with climate change or climate. Uh, and that's like a, a massive database. Well, it's got like 2000 documents. Uh, and now that they put that together, most of it manually, uh, they, they actually wanted something to, to allow people to explore that information, to, to find data, uh, so find information about these laws and these policies. Uh, and there's multiple use cases. Uh, it could be for policymakers to kind of go in and, and they've been, they, maybe they've been tasked to, to create policy or laws about wind farms in, in, in the UK, and they might want to kind of find out what's out there. Uh, but it's also for people that, for investment companies, maybe they want to, to, to know where to invest. Um, it could be also for insurance companies, uh, and even just for, for, for your, you know, your normal people that might just want to know what are the, the policies for cycling, for example. So, so it's kind of, it's got a wide reach. But in essence, You've got a lot of information. You've got information that come from unstructured data sources, so documents, uh, and you want to kind of find out find out about it. Uh, so, so the solution we built was a, a data exploration platform. Uh, and when you say it like that, it doesn't mean a lot. Uh, but it basically allowed a person to go in, put some search terms, and find out which documents uh, are interesting or, or rank high against that search term and we've added a little bit of spice on it because if you think you know if you think about it it's like google right you go in you type something and here you go you got a list of results but in this case that was not super helpful and and, and with google you know you, can, you look at what the first the first page the second page. so what we've done is a graphical interface where after the search you can see the different documents uh, uh, represented as nodes, and uh, you can see the, the similarities between the different documents as relationships between the nodes or, or, or as kind of uh, little connections. And the more, the more similar it is a document to the other, kind of darker the relationship is, and you can really find out, okay, this one is really, really similar to that one and then you can open them up and you can compare them so it's it's, it's quite powerful because uh, you quickly if you're looking again i'm going to use the same example if you're looking for wind farm information you can very quickly notice that uh, there's different countries are, are, have, have wind farm uh, policy in different types of documents 
and then you can start reading about them and kind of try to find out what, which one is the, the one that is working and which ones are the ones that are not working. Uh, so yeah, so that's the data exploration platform. So in terms of, of features, yeah, as I said, there's a graphical visualization of the search results uh, where you can find lots of different things about the similarity. But once you go into it, you can uh, we actually add a, a compare comparison uh, where, where it would show you the different things that or the, the, the different elements that are similar. So you could kind of understand why, why these documents are, are, are alike. Um, and we also add full text document search. So you, it would find out things that are within the, the documents when, when you search for it. Um, and I think that was that was it. And maybe right. Christian and Jonas, you want to add anything? Maybe one of you can oh. explain a bit more about the technology that you use. How did you implement it? Okay, so uh, when we started in the front end, we, we made a placer application with this graph was uh, implemented in D3 GIS. And for this AI part, we used Azure Cognitive Services. So uh, Joe mentioned the full text search, that was one part. And the other part was the entity extraction service where we passed in the documents. Entities were extracted and then uh, we built up the similarity search based on all this information like the, the metadata that were manually um, edited or were in the database, the extracted entities and the full text search and we brought all that together in this similarity matching algorithm. Well, was it challenging to build it in just five days? I mean, it's it's not an easy yeah. task. It, it certainly was, but I think the, the biggest challenge was in the beginning actually figuring out what we should do and, and what actually to focus on, right? Um, in the end, we could actually realize a lot of the implementation stuff in, in a rather short time, so I would say we implemented the core and a core logic and all that stuff of the application like one and a half days. Um, so there was obviously some um, uh, piecing things together, which uh, which was a bit tricky, but we had good uh, like distribution of these tasks again on, on the different sources. And, and then in the end, it was just um, a matter of, of adding the different sources for that similarity indexing, right? Or the similarity matching. So yeah, there were certainly challenges, but yeah. Uh, I think there were more non-technical challenges than technical challenges. <laughs> Got it. And maybe you can actually tell us that, how did you hear about the hackathon and what motivated you to join in the very first place? Yeah, uh, so, so, well, to me it was, within Zulka, we, we, we do, we're starting to look at a lot at sustainability and 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 how we can help, um, you know, where we are based, and because we got office all over the place, um, the and, and one one of the one of the persons kind of noticed that and told us to put out a, a some of kind of a an appeal saying, look, anybody wants to join this hackathon? It looks quite interesting, uh, and it put out to to everybody in the company, and we just. Lots of people kind of decided to, to kind of step forward and uh, and apply, uh, and that that we put together this team. That is, it was interesting because we are six people uh, from four different offices, three different countries, which was quite interesting. That never worked before together, so so that was quite interesting. So, how you organized yourself during the hackathon? How did you work in uh, work hours, uh, whole days, evenings? What what worked for you? How it looked like? So we basically had every one of us had the whole week, and yeah, we spent it on the work hours at the daily, somewhere in the morning, and teams always on and called each other. It was like working was like 
in a regular project just for good cause. <laughs> short sprint. <laughs> but that's what short Packard sprint. is about. Yeah, yeah making yeah. a short sprint and, del and delivering some something in the end. And uh, often those uh, small, small things like, uh, OK, let's uh, do a daily to see where we are. That helps. Or let's just do a stand up five minutes to figure out like uh, if it's some from my experience in person hackathons 24 48 hours like okay every two hours let's do a stand up to <laughs> to see where we are and uh, yeah is there is everything on the on plan nice uh, yeah uh, do you plan to go to some other hackathons in in this uh, in this team format or maybe extending it with some other colleagues from company yeah, probably not with that. Yeah, team, I mean, because that was kind of a one off thing. But I actually passed on one of the, the hackathons you're organizing as Stratitech, the health hackathon, on to our health guys. I don't know if they joined in the end, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. hackathon finished the uh, finished the last week. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I didn't uh, hear back from then. Yeah. Joe, you wanted to? I was going to say, yeah. I mean, uh, it's. I think it. As you said, maybe not the the, the same team because everybody's in different projects and sometimes you can't you can't just get time off uh, like that. But uh, it's definitely a very interesting format, uh, and I really liked it because usually when I thought about hackathons, it's it's very much kind of developer 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 and on this one our team actually had, had four developers and two bas uh, and we were able to kind of put together a really nice uh, solution so yeah yeah that is to yeah. have diversity of skills right yeah exactly i i always say that when you form a team uh, the hackathon it should reflect the real real life real world and in real world you have multiple different diverse um, actually skills in the in the team to make it successful and they are as equal import equally important and uh one thing i i, I actually i didn't get it that you are uh, your team you said that in three different countries so it was switzerland uk and what was the third one austria germany austria, austria sorry austria. <laughs> 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 and there is no kangaroo in in austria <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Right. And um, so, do you prefer? Uh, I'm also asking you as well. At the end, do you prefer that in-person one or online one? Well, for uh, me, I, I would say that I would prefer the in-person one, um, just because you get a lot more groove and like the the whole atmosphere is way different. And I think it's also way easier to exchange with other teams, like very casually without going to some whatever a chat room and whatever. I wasn't really the guy to go in there that much, but I think if you do that in person, that's way easier to to like just see what they're doing and exchange some some interesting thoughts. Um, but especially in this uh, setup and and with the the allowances we got from our company, right? Uh, this was also a very a doable format for us. But if I had to choose, I would probably prefer an in-person hackathon. Yeah. Me too, for sure. <laughs> but uh, I mean, uh, I've been to a lot of hackathons and uh, often like uh, pre-corona times, uh, we organize like every few months. Uh, OK, let's visit some city. Hackathon is over there. Let's spend the weekend. Let's do some coding, have fun, meet other people and uh, it's uh, it's also like this uh, competition part where you challenge yourself to to deliver something uh, in in that short time and uh, to make it as best as possible. And uh, what is probably most most important in in whole story is that you see so many innovative ideas, approaches, uh, things that people build, and like this really. Uh, has some wow effect like okay how you came up with that 
So that's that's always uh, great to see the other presentations and uh, such. And uh, yeah, that is what's what's missing on the online hackathons having one common stage where everybody will present like it happens in the in the in person hackathons. But still uh, online has some other benefits. So yeah, like organizing with it, people different time zones, different countries. You don't need to travel and spend the uh, time on that. And yeah, yeah Goran is them. a Goran is a professional hackathoner. I, <laughs> so, yeah. I, I guess in in to make sure that we are on time, maybe you can uh, you can actually is there anything else you can you can hi highlight about uh, what happened during the hackathon? Some fun fact? Why you are purple penguins? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> purple pink, yeah. I mean, it's uh, purple is the color, right? Uh, Zulka's colors are is purple, as you can see on on, on Christian's uh, background. Uh, but uh, and then penguins is it's a it's a nice animal, isn't it? It's kind of uh, <laughs> <laughs> a funny looking one. It's, it's a cool one. Uh, in terms of of what happened during the, the hackathon, there was a a nice moment of of. Uh, Trying to, to 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 finish the movie, the the the, the video, uh, and uh, we finished it, and it was like three minutes and one second, uh, and we kind of oh damn it, we have to kind of go back and take that what, that extra second out, uh, uh, and I had to kind of reshot some some of the things, and and in the end, I think we we do we delivered like five minutes to deadline, <laughs> so yeah, that was that was an interesting uh, stressful moment. <laughs> Great. So your uh, your lucky animal was purple penguins then in, this, in your case. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Team Purple Penguin, um, for a great um, um, solution and then for nice chat. And it was really great to to actually to talk to you all. Um, there is a um, I did put. Uh, the link in the chat as well. There is also um, an article about the, the team that you can read more about that. Uh, I will post it in the chat as well. So we can move on to the next project. Uh, actually, to next team, uh, Unit 8. Uh, so in who actually, who wants to give a, a quick introduction about the whole project? Um, I can start with that. So our challenge was the Amber and Sudak challenge in the carpet track, um, whose main goal was detecting methane leaks. But even beyond just this uh, detection, it was gaining some insight from them. So trying to map these methane leaks to possible sources, for example. And we thought that the best way to achieve this would be by building a simple web UI. And we hosted this in Azure. And this web UI displays probable methane leaks and uh, an interactive uh, map. So anyone can go in there and see for this past week, uh, we, we think like uh, ranked in importance, we think there, are, there were these 10 methane leaks. And by clicking them, you can go and see that, oh, in this place in South Africa, there was a methane leak, et cetera. Uh, a lot of our challenge was actually just finding the data we could work with and learning how to use it, especially satellite data and methane concentration data in the air. Uh, but in the end, I think we got a good working solution. Um, our machine learning algorithm, in our opinion, actually detected some very likely methane leaks. Um, and we added all these neat um, layers on top of the interactive map like um, all in nearby infrastructure so you could see uh, a hotspot for methane and see if there were gas pi pipelines going through it, coal plants near it, which companies they belong to, addresses, etc. And also we added layers like infrared imaging so we can switch on that layer, for example, and zoom in even more and actually see not just that it's an area with a high concentration of methane, but weather conditions permitting see the actual methane plume uh, in infrared, so we can pinpoint the actual place the methane is escaping from. 
And since all of this is based on publicly available uh, company and satellite data, uh, this can be just something that can be set up to continuously monitor all these leaks. And I we think it can allow swift action and insight on the major causes and companies behind some of these major methane leaks. That's great. And um, how you applied, how you heard about Hackathon and uh, motivation to pick uh, exactly that challenge? Um, yeah, I, I think we heard about that, uh, about Hackathon because we work with Azure. So we are a, a partner with Microsoft and our content um, told us about Hackathon. Um, and in our company, we have some time that we can allocate to, to projects that benefit society. Uh, so when we are the, there was this hackathon related to climate change. Uh, it was uh, presented to the company and the five of us uh, applied to that. We were interested and yeah, we wanted to, to tackle this challenge and see if we, can, if we could apply our skills to this given problem. And I think regarding yeah, the, the methane leaks, so yeah, satellite data have become quite, uh, uh, there are quite a lot online now, and but they are still the beginning of being used. And I, I think it's quite uh, a very interesting data source that can reveal a lot about what's happening today and how things are evolving. So that's why also we picked a challenge with the geosatellite data, because we, we think there's quite some interesting things to do in, in that space. And, and especially methane uh, is one where it, it's hard to to make companies accountable. So uh, if we can help detect that and and maybe put a bit more light on this, then I think there are things that we we as in general can do to to make it, the company maybe more visible and try to have them kind of yeah have at least some repercussion about what they are doing. Yeah. Since you all are uh, all working at the same company, maybe you can also tell us that um, how did you manage your time? Was it during the work hours or in the in the evening? How did you work together? Um, it was a bit tough sometimes uh, since most of us were also working in different projects at the same time. It was hard to find uh, the time and the place for all of us to meet together, uh, but we made it work. Um, we made some time, usually um, mostly after work, to actually work on the project and meet and discuss what actually needed to be done and implemented. So it was also a bit in person, or, or everything was online. Uh, have you used Discord or uh, like how you communicated? We mostly used um, uh, Google Meet and uh, Slack since we're all in the same company. That's what we usually use anyway. So we kind of just use what we had in hand all online. So yeah, no, uh, no in-person meetings, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it was during one of the one of these peak of uh, cases in Switzerland. So I think it was quite uh, didn't want to meet in person at the office or and yeah, that was also a bit of challenge to to yeah, find the right times together since we were on different projects. But uh, yeah, I think it was a bit easier probably than different time zones. So if they managed, then I think we, <laughs> we could also. But what you said there is um, also beauty of the hackathon, picking the any tool that you have nearby that will fulfill the purpose, right? And just uh, going with it to to achieve the goal. That's, uh, that's really uh, interesting always fun to see and uh, yeah, great uh, approach. So what are you most proud of? If you could take one piece from your project, one small achievement. I would say actually finishing the, the project, I think uh, one day before it looked like uh, there were a lot of things that still needed to come together. And somehow, I don't know, in the last last day we managed to get <laughs> everything working. 
That's normally the case. <laughs> Anyone else from the team wants to add anything? I, or uh, similarly to to Team Penguin, we uh, we also finished like <laughs> at the last minute uh, making the video. It was also too long, so we had to cut it uh, in like a <laughs> tight deadline, upload it to YouTube, and and then yeah, things worked. So we didn't get the issue, but. It could have been a bit different if we <laughs> a lot of stuff. Yeah, we finished literally 15 minutes before the deadline. <laughs> Videos and features. Yeah. Great. And what was your biggest learning? Any of you? I think for us, at least with uh, Yasir, since we work on that part, like the geosatellite data, it's uh, it's quite difficult to, to work with today, uh, we feel, because uh, there is this Google Earth engine that allows us to combine different uh, data sets together instead of having to go to each satellite website. But they also make it very complicated to get data out of, uh, of their uh, uh, API, so um, it's kind of uh, easy to get started, but then hard to really make a solution at the end, so uh, that was maybe a biggest learning we thought it would be easier to to do that and uh, so i think that's also what surprised us there do you think hackathons are like good way to test and improve your skills like uh, did you you went with the skills you technologies you know right but there's always something extra to solve like uh, do you did you get some learnings out of it <clears throat> learn the extra stuff yeah so for me definitely like uh, i have worked with azure previously but not not that much right so uh, putting up all the infrastructure on it uh, using the azure ml was also like the first time mm. and um, yeah putting it all together afterwards was also like definitely much easier because of the um, azure and you realize like suddenly how easy it is to put up a uh, a good web like a web page with some ui and uh, connect it with some storage and before like in four days that would be like or five days that would be really unimaginable but now so uh, for me definitely like working with azure was uh, was uh, newer experience i say right to be cautious of the time so maybe is there Anything else? Any highlight? Any lucky animals? Any anything fun <laughs> for your team? And highlight? Um, no, uh, necessarily funny moments, but I think the highlight was, like as you were saying, the the last day before the deadline, um, everything was seeming kind of bleak, and then everything started to come together. And when we were reviewing what we were showing in the data. It was a cool moment where we actually looked at the web UI and we're, and we're like, oh, this is actually a methane leak. I think we actually got something here. I think we're actually doing something useful and we are showing like an actual methane leak. Yeah, similarly for me, like uh, first two days, we like we're this still deciding what exactly we want to do and we're not sure. And uh, uh, I think Lucas and Gail were, were actually looking for some leaks because we had this uh, UI from some other NGO, which showed the methane concentration, and uh, yeah, but the the leaks were not there, so we had to find them, and so, so we still didn't have uh, have anyone anything, and uh, so we tried to go through the news, like where where it was the leak, what time, but it was not concrete even in the news, and then suddenly someone posted like, oh, this is the picture, there's the red dot, the red dot is there, it's this is a leak, right? That's, that's it, that's it. And suddenly it started to look like much better. And yeah, the next day, uh, Gael came with uh, some algorithm and suddenly like you could see like m many more leaks all over the place. And uh, yeah, that was a really cool moment. I have one highlight to say that Microsoft planted uh, thousand trees uh, to offset the carbon <laughs> from this event. So yeah, the that was uh, that was nice and something to our plan of will benefit for, uh, from right um, awesome projects great teams amazing experience it was really fun yeah sherry something to add to wrap up uh, no just again thanks for all of you 
that you joined and you you actually you contributed and we really hope that um i mean we at least could do something uh, in in our hand i mean <laughs> to to do something for the climate um great and uh, and really hope to see you again on the future events especially the next climate hackathon so because <laughs> we are going we are planning to to actually to learn uh, from what we organize this year and try to make something which is more concrete and more to the point, hopefully next year. Yeah. Emma? Thanks so much, Sherry. I think you wrapped that up perfectly. Um, thank you everyone for joining and contributing. And um, yeah, next in our green tech series is pollen detector and ob object detection algorithm for pollens and biodiversity. So it's happening same time next week. I'll drop the link in again in the chat um, before I end the session. But thank you everyone once again. And um, it was a pleasure having you all on this session and hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.